The next speaker is uh, Javier. Uh, yes, Javier. Uh, Javier. 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 Uh, Javier. Uh, Javier. Uh, Javier. Uh, uh, he's a well known curator and is an art critic and the director of uh, Centro Cultural Montenegro. Cultura 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 in Spain. Uh, he will give us a, a conceptual framework underlying the project, the production, uh, exhibition, and diffusion of <coughs> contemporary art and court that was carried out at the Montenegro Cultural Center for the four years from 2008 to 2011. And this project, for the first time in Spain, incorporated women in all of its programs and activity in parity. The project was based on feminist thoughts. Uh, as a crucial source of knowledge for understanding contemporary artistic pra practices and the society that produce, produces them. So, the, talk, the next talk will be Monte Hermoso, 2008-2011, a feminist model for the field of art. Please welcome. Buenos dias to everybody. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Lisa Pazzini and the rest of the organizers and the sponsors for the invitation to be here. Um, is it is a, a great pleasure to share with you the work that we were doing in Montermoso from 2008 to 2011. And um, I also want to say that is, uh, I always feel that that work forms part of the feminist movement because it's just, uh, I was the director of the project. But it's a collective group. Uh, it's a collective work that has been uh, carried out uh, by many people. And um, I'm going to start. I want to read it because, of course, English is not my native language. I'm going to try to read the talk. Assuming the problem of sexism in art, despite its own disciplinary and cultural specificities, exceeds the framework of the artistic field as well as the national frameworks, I invited a group of thinkers, artists, art curators, and institutional representatives of different generations and nationalities to the discussion forum on the intersection between art and feminism, which I directed for the second consecutive year in the Madrid Art Fair in February 2005. In that edition, I proposed the title Equality Policies Between Men and Women Within the Art World, Designing Strategies, with the intention of promoting a specific actions that went beyond the usual, though necessary, statistical elaborations which confirm the overwhelming evidence that women continue to undergo, undergo discrimination in the field of art in the Hague of the 21st century or the equally usual and necessary task of recovering female artists or quoting by official history of art. For this, I invited speakers who would address the political dimensions of both figures and monographs from a feminist perspective. My proposal was initially based on two data, one being that women were and are a majority in fine arts faculties, and two, that in spite of it, of it the presence of artists in the programs and collections of art centers and museums has continued and still continues to be minimal. Moreover, I related this data to two other issues. In first place, that supranational organisms such as the European Union and the United Nations have been recommending member states to adopt measures aimed at correcting gender inequality for years. Measures such, such as application of sex quota policies, which were producing positive results both in the political and business realms. And secondly, the fact that these measures were not being implemented in the field of art and did not even seem to affect it. Both the speakers and the audience took part in a debate that soon polarize into two positions. On one hand, the stance backing the idea that was implicit in the organizational proposal of the debate, which stood for demanding public administration 
administrations to establish policies such as the sex quotas in programs and acquisitions of our work from art centers and museums as an adequate tool of ensuring equal opportunities for women in the field of art. It was alleged, alleged that the majority of the structures in charge of the production, exhibition, and diffusion of art in the Spanish state are financed with public funds, and therefore those structures were susceptible to of adopting measures such as the application of sex quotas, which have proven to be successful in other areas of activity. On the other, on the other hand, there were those positions insisting on the idea that quota policies would not solve the problem of women's discriminations in the art field, as this is a structural matter which requires a complete transformation of the social and artistic institutions in order to eliminate their sex bias. The discussion was tough mainly because a certain, a certain sector of feminists sorry, the discussion was tough mainly because a certain sector of feminism was very critical of what some years earlier had been named as the institutionalization of feminism. In fact, the so in fact, let me say that again. In fact, the, ex the feminist reinterpretation of the history of art, as well as that of the artistic practices of today, and their analysis implied, as Polo has pointed out in 1988, I'm quoting, recognizing the hierarchies of power which rule the relationships between the sexes, lending visibility to the mechanisms on which male hegemony is founded and tackling the process of social construction of sexual difference and examining the role played by representation in that articulation of difference." End of quote. <laughs> the development of those policies and perspectives have made Montermoso into the first center for contemporary art, culture, and thought to apply the articles referring to art and culture in the current equality laws of the Basque region. <coughs> The center followed two strategies to guarantee the participation of women in poverty, which do not isolate women and their work as specific subcategories in the realm of art, in the realm of art and intellectual activity. The first one, to apply sex quotas in every single activity and program to ensure that half of those taking part in the program were women to distribute the public budget on the basis of sex and to lend visibility and promote the work of women. The feminist <coughs> intervention upon the budget of the institution did also include a reflection about the material <coughs> conditions of the artistic and intellectual production that generated a table of fees that had a relationship with the salaries that we ourselves were receiving at the institution. The second strategy was to apply feminist quotas. This is to develop lines of artistic production and exhibition that promote feminist thought, focusing on the promotion of values such as equality, as well as deconstructing sex, gender, and sexual stereotypes. Following the Nobling and Pollock perspectives, the program of the center could be divided into two groups. The first group, the general program, which produced exhibitions that were inscribed in the different international contemporary art currents in which we did apply sex quotas, and at a different level we did include the feminist perspective as one more of the perspectives that were informing the projects. In this sense, Montermoso was a territory of possibility between two spheres, relational nets of the field of art that very rarely get in contact and almost never do so, never do so in a continuous way. Being the specifically feminist programs, like the curatorial, the curatorial and exhibition project <coughs> Contraseñas Passwords, in which different feminist curators were invited from different cultural contexts to do a selection of feminist art pieces. So the project was produced and judged according to the criterion of different feminist discourses. Another example of this site was the course about feminist perspectives on artistic practice and theory, 
that the feminist anthropologist Lourdes Mendez and myself did co-direct in which we did invite theoreticians from different disciplines and nationalities to insist in the social character of the production of art and to spread and continue writing a feminist art history. The general program was structured around the art and research program, which was one of the central aces of the center, that did condense and show a series, a series of preoccupations, goals, that in a systematic and a cross-wide way defined the cultural policy that was developed in Montermoso. Every year, eight artistic projects, a curatorial one, and three <coughs> research projects, from which amongst them at least one was dedicated to the writing of the history of the relations between art and feminism in the Spanish state, were produced and exhibited in the center as part of the art and research program. The open call for the projects, as well as the selection, the exhibition, and the diffusion of these artistic projects, did develop the art research relationship that focused on the artistic practices as a complex methodology to produce knowledge. This program, so they did the other ones, connected a series, a series of agents from the realms of education, critique, art centers, and curatorial and artistic practice that woven a complex relational, relational net. The launching of the project made it possible to situate the Centro Cultural Montermoso in a network of renowned national and international institutions at the same time as it did widen the relationships and implication, implication of the center with the local context, bringing contemporary art and culture closer to the users. This is the presentation. Break. Um, so, if anyone, could you talk? Could you talk about the show you did, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang? Oh, that was just at the very beginning. Uh, of the, it was 2007, and it did uh, take place in time at the same time that it was starting the job in Montermoso. But I. I was working for that since two years earlier, 2005. Um, from the Spanish uh, and also European perspectives, we did not have um, a big show until, until 2007 um, covering the, I did the production of this label, Feminist Art. So I really thought it was a good idea to put up one. And, um, and it was very surprising to discover, like when in 2005 we were doing the, the ARCO round tables, Linda Noblin was one of the guests and she was also working on the Dissident uh, Sacklers Global Feminism show. So all of a sudden we, uh, and, you know, we found out that many people, many curators uh, were working on the, on the same topic. And uh, but it's so interesting to find out how different all of the shows are. The show that I created, um, it didn't. It was uh, it, com it was 45 years of uh, art and feminism since the late 60s until 2007, and um, was considering uh, the feminist art um, production as part of a wider um, social and political movement and very influenced, I mean the feminist <coughs> art movement was the, the show, the main curatorial uh, idea was to, to show the context, the political and social context of the artistic context. Can you, can you back the mic? Okay. Um, I'm sorry. I, I was this I was specifically interested in your addressing um, a topic of great dialogue in the States about whether or not these feminist shows in, the t in 2007 should include men, male artists. 
And, you know, as you know, quite by chance, Donald and I were in Bilbao and saw Kiss Kiss Bang Bang and were incredibly in impressed by the way in which you seamlessly incorporated male performance art in the context of the history of feminist art because it uh, provided, one, a context to see that the work by the male performance artists in a whole new way, and two, made it clear the influence of feminist art on the wider art discourse, which is, of course, one of the things Andrew also addressed yesterday. So I was particularly, you know, it was very controversial in the States. A lot of people wanted Connie Butler to include ma male artists who had been influenced by feminist art, for example, uh, Paul McCarthy and David Sally, who were at, at, at CalArts when I was doing the feminist art program. I just thought it was really interesting what, what made you decide that, how you selected the artists, your approach to that, because I think that's a step into the future, actually. Well, to be honest, um, thank you for the question, Judy. Uh, to be honest, I did not include any male artists. I mean, but I invited five uh, collectives to do uh, pieces on, uh, like another curatorial work, let's say, uh, um, inside the show. So they, some of them, they included what you're saying is, you know, like some, uh, the production of some other people that they invited to participate oh. in the project. I thought about that, and uh, as it was the first show, I thought it was very important also, not, I mean, of course that is, I thought that would be the very interesting topic for a second show. But as it was the first one, I thought that it was very important to pray to pay an homage to the pioneers, you know, that specifically also had to deal with the feminist label, you know, consequences in their backs. So I thought, you know, that was like a, a, an homage to them also. But of course, we, we also wanted to, you know, this is why I invited some other people to, to give another views and to include um, um, some of the, let's say, influences of what um, feminist art since the late 60s has had in, in art ever since, because 2007 is 45 years later. So it was through these collectives yeah. that these male performance artists were included? Through that these artists or collectives, yeah. yeah. That oh, that's it. interesting. No, one more question. Oh. <laughs> um, I don't have a question relating to your talk. I have a reflection. No, I use this. Yeah, I was, I was just you. telling her. Oh, yeah, okay. Maybe she should take the question first. Do you have a question or a, a comment? Oh, Do you have a question or a comment? I have a question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have it. Um, I, congratulations for the This is Bang Bang, it was brilliant. And I'd like to ask you, did the, your work and uh, the families uh, in Barcelona with Preciado on the Contemporary Art Museum, uh, is it making any difference in uh, art education in Spain? Let me see if I understood the question. That the work of Beatrice, the families work of Beatrice Preciado, Their question is whether what you did has had any change. I think she's saying, I'm talking about somebody. Are you talking about Beatriz Preciado? Well, I was talking about you and Preciado, the work she's doing in Barcelona two weeks summers. Oh, like the, you know, like the collective group of different yeah. people working, yeah. I understand the question now. about that a lot, we all think about that a lot. Um, well, first of all, I, I, how I end up knowing about the feminist art um, practice, it was not through the central historical avenue, let's call it, you know, so I got it through the backside, through the movement, through the, through, through the political and social and artistic movement, but not through the, not, not at the university, you know, not in the central way of transmission of knowledge. And so that I, I'm saying this to acknowledge that 
the transmission is functioning in some other different ways. So, your question. I think what we are doing, like my generation of curators and, and feminist artists, it is also operating very much in that same level. But for the first time, as you're mentioning, Beatriz Preciado is working in, a, in an institution, one of the big ones, MAGMA in Barcelona, or the work we did in Montermoso, there are also, it's also institutional work which is making a big difference. This is happening for the first time and it is our generation due to the work that the previous generations of feminists have been doing that we can, you know, uh, start this project. The problem is to evaluate its efficiency. Um, and also I'm very excited in Norway because uh, I think that uh, the, con the level, the, the context is very similar to Spain. You, I think you are um, under the same umbrella of some European Union laws, you also have some equality laws, and but you don't have any specific um, any specific laws, really, as far as I know, maybe I'm wrong, to you know dealing with the field of art. And maybe it was, it was a good idea that you could claim, you know, to your politicians or to your governments to have some actions taken, because if I'm not wrong, if you are paying with your taxes the reproduction of sexism, that, that is you know, like a, something to think about. And uh, in democratic societies, and if equality is on the horizon of the democratic discourse, and it wouldn't be any equality between equality men and women, I think that is a strong point for you Norwegians to ask your government to develop uh, specific measures to fight the discrimination of women in the art world in your country. And how is that operate? I mean, I only know, I can only speak about um, starting some, I'm working, and maybe it is too early to, valorate, to evaluate, you know, the consequences of all this. In the Spanish context, I have the feeling of a success and a failure. Because, uh, as you all know, the, the economic situation in Spain now is quite difficult, so it is very easy to say it is not the right moment to deal with this issue. Let's wait until the economy gets better. I don't think you don't have this problem in Norway, so this is why I think it's also very exciting. You know, so, but uh, let's see how they, de how, they, how they deal with keeping excluding the women from the programs, because, uh, you know, we, when I was a director from 2008 to 2011, that was four years of young artists, male and female artists, you know, uh, that we were also doing projects with very young people. So we were in touch and seeing all these people uh, doing the art practices that have seen that it's possible to do it in another way. And I guess they are also going to fight, you know, to keep having that kind of institutions. And also, it is very important to think locally that we are part of a global uh, world because um, and especially in the art world this is why we choose to 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 work with the international uh, contemporary art category because this is a discipline that is circulating in worldwide so is sexism and patriarchy so they are connected and I think you know like we should um, think of the possibilities of that as an important uh, issue also. We have time for one more short question and then we go to the I very seldom have questions. <laughs> but I have a reflection that I was thinking about. Thank you very much for your um, lecture. While I was listening to you, I was also processing Elizabeth's lecture. And suddenly I came to link um, um, something that you said about a project that I'm working with and I would like to share it with you. Uh, and that was the way you discuss creativity and how we are all creative human beings. And I'm working on an exhibition that I hope to open in Cairo this year or next year. And the title of the exhibition is Lust for Life. Because I started to read the Bible recently, um, um, especially uh, in the Genesis when God creates earth, 
because as we all know, God is the first artist, because he had a creative mind. Um, he? Well, sorry. That's, uh, <laughs> I'm coming to that. <laughs> and we all learned in school how the serpent lured Eva into eating from the apple from the tree of knowledge. But from what I understand, it was God that planted that tree together with the tree uh, for eternal life. The serpent, as we all know, is a symbol for curing, for medicine. And as we also know, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. <laughs> so what I'm telling you is that the serpent cured Adam and Eve through Eve, because she was the creative one, by giving them not of the tree for eternal life, but of the tree of knowledge. And knowledge, as we also know, frees us. And through that action, Adam and Eve were kicked out of a very beautiful but probably extremely boring paradise. <laughs> and they became the first immigrants, the first free people with all the opportunities that are in being free, but also all the responsibilities of being free human beings. Thank you for that. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much for framing me as a follower of Eva. <laughs> <laughs> or the serpent, the most 